Hey everybody, today I wanted to start a new series about building a virtual home lab. So we might be wondering why is having a home lab important? Well, having a home lab, especially being a pen tester, allows you to learn new attack techniques on your own and have your own personal sandbox environment where you can set up new services and practice different techniques on those services. It also allows you to learn a lot of common service configurations. Now that's very important because a lot of the vulnerabilities that are out there to be found are due to common service misconfigurations. Uh, especially Active Directory. That's something that many organizations use. Almost every company is going to be using AD. And if that's not configured properly, it can lead to a lot of serious bugs. So some of the example services I want to set up initially are LDAP, uh, NFS, uh, a web server, and Active Directory. Uh, there's going to be a lot more services that are going to be set up in this home lab, but those are some of the ones I'd like to get started initially. If there's any services that you'd like to see set up, please feel free to let me know. And the goal of this is to have everything completely provisioned and automatically set up. My initial goal is to use Packer and Ansible to do all of this, but it may change as we go forward. Also, all of the code that I generate from those things are going to be on a public GitHub repo, so you can go ahead and clone it and set this up at home with no effort. All right, so the first step in all this is going to be installing VirtualBox and making sure that we can get our first virtual machine set up. So if you go to the VirtualBox website onto the downloads page, you can go ahead and download VirtualBox. Uh, I already downloaded it for Windows. Make sure uh, to download that and install it. It's a very straightforward installation. If you have any issues, feel free to reach out to me for help or look up an online guide. Uh, I've already installed it to save some time in this video. And the first virtual machine that I'm going to be setting up is an Ubuntu virtual machine. So you can go ahead to this URL here. I'll put that down in the description and download the ISO file from here. Now, after you have those two things downloaded and installed, you can open up VirtualBox. And on the left here is going to be a list of all different virtual machines. Just starting up, you won't have any. So we can go ahead and click New to create a new virtual machine. And then give it a name. I'm just going to name this Home Lab Desktop. All right. And then we need to select the type of operating system that it is. And it's going to be Linux. And the first thing it selected for me was Ubuntu 64 bit. Uh, that's what we're going to be using today. Now, if you have an issue here where you're only seeing 32-bit for selections, it means that uh, most likely you do not have virtualization enabled in your BIOS. I'll put a link in the description for a guide on how to do that and how to fix that problem down there. All right, and after hitting Next, the next thing we need to select is the amount of memory or RAM that we're going to allocate to the machine. Since we're doing a, desk a desktop installation of Ubuntu, I'd recommend giving this at least four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, definitely the more the merrier, can't hurt to have extra. The next thing we need to do is create a virtual hard disk for the machine. So we'll just go ahead and click create here. We're gonna make a uh, VDI image, click next, and it's gonna be dyna dynamically allocated, which means that it's only going to use the space that, it's act that it actually needs. It's not gonna allocate the full chunk of the hard disk space at once when it's created. So now we can specify the size of the hard disk that we want to create. I'm going to make this one 20 gigabytes. You can make it however big you choose. I would recommend at least 10 gigabytes. And click next. Now after that, we're going to go click on the machine we just created and click settings. And then go to system. And under here, you can allocate uh, more CPU cores to it. You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, I'm going to allocate a second core to this one. And this is where you can also change the amount of RAM. Then if we go to storage, we're going to want to put the ISO file in as a bo as bootable media for this. So we're going to go ahead and click on this disk here that says empty. And then click on the disk icon here and click choose virtual optical disk file. This is going to open up a file selection menu. And we're going to select the desktop Ubuntu ISO that we just downloaded earlier. And then click Open. And then click OK. Now if we click on our machine down here and go ahead and click Start, it should boot up our virtual machine. All right. And once that installs, you can go ahead and select your language here on the left. I'm actually just going to full screen this real quick. And there's going to be two options, try Ubuntu and install Ubuntu. Try Ubuntu is just going to be a live boot of the operating system. So none of the changes that you make will be permanent and nothing will actually be saved. 
what we want to do is go ahead and install the operating system so that it's here every time we boot. So the first thing it's going to ask is just for your keyboard layout. You can go ahead and select that there and then hit continue. And then we, we just want to do a normal installation where it's going to install the standard packages. And then we also want to install updates uh, while the operating system installs. This can save us a lot of time later, so we don't have to do any updates after, every, after the installation is done. All right, and then just select Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. Uh, since this is in a virtual machine, we don't have to worry about anything in our actual hard drive being erased. And this warning message may seem a little scary, but it won't actually delete any of your files as long as you're actually booted into your virtual machine. And then it's just going to tell us it's going to overwrite this drive and we'll say, okay, continue. And uh, it'll ask for your time zone. Go ahead and select that and then press continue. And then we're going to have to set up an account that'll be our initial account on the system. So go ahead and enter uh, whatever name you want to put in there, the computer name and a username and then a password. Make sure you remember these credentials as it's going to be what we need to log into the system. And now the operating system is just going to go ahead and install. This is going to take a couple minutes, so I will cut to when it is finished. All right, so after the installation has finished, it's going to prompt you to reboot your virtual machine. So just go ahead and click Restart Now. And then go ahead and press Enter when prompted here. You don't have to actually worry about removing any installation media or anything like that. Alright, and then once your new virtual machine reboots, you should be prompted with a login screen for the user that you just created. So go ahead and enter the password to the account that you created. And then we're going to be met with the desktop screen for our new Ubuntu system. So we can go ahead and go through uh, this, new, this new information here. And if we open up a terminal, you'll see that the user that you just created will have full sudo access. So you can go ahead and do sudo-i type in your password and we have full root of the machine. So that's how to set up our first virtual machine for this home lab. Going forward, I want to have this process fully automated so that you don't have to answer any of the installation questions and that this can be automatically provisioned. But this is a good first step moving forward. If you have any services that you'd like to see specifically set up in this home lab, please let me know down in the comment section.